Foreign Minister Bhutto Zadari, welcome to the program. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. So can Thank I just start by asking me. you, I know you're in New York, how significant is it for you that this government, the Taliban government, seems to have said that it's brokered a ceasefire between, uh, between those two warring sides? Do you accept that? Is that correct? Um, as far as uh, d the terrorist issues are concerned, Pakistan has been uh, worried about the increase in terrorist activity and we are looking to the regime in Afghanistan uh, to play their role uh, in uh, discouraging uh, an increase of terrorist activity and this is indeed an encouraging sign. We continue uh, to uh, not only monitor this situation but work on our side to ensure uh, that we can ta ta tackle uh, the threat of terrorism and um, hope that the, the regime in Afghanistan lives up to their international commitment to not allow their soil to be used for terrorism. Um, Foreign Minister, you're at the United Nations. The UN has a whole raft of sanctions against the Taliban. Uh, I don't believe any country, even yours, has recognized this new government. Correct me if I'm wrong. What will it take for your country, let's say, to accept the government here in Kabul? As far as recognition is concerned, we are working with the international community and we'll, we'll take those decisions in step, uh, in line. Uh, with uh, the international community. At the same time, we continue to advocate for engagement and particularly in light of the humanitarian crisis developing in Afghanistan. We believe it is not good for the people of Afghanistan and it's not good for the region or indeed the international community if 95% of the people of Afghanistan descend into poverty. It would not be a good message for the international community to send or indeed for us in Pakistan to send to the people of Afghanistan if they get the impression that we're abandoning them in this difficult time. Though we're emphasizing um, increased humanitarian efforts and also underscoring the importance of ensuring that there isn't a complete collapse of the Afghan economy. Of course that too will have disastrous implications for the people mm -hmm. of Afghanistan. Simultaneously, we in the international community are emphasizing the importance uh, to the new regime in Afghanistan that they live up to international commitments, be it vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, terrorism uh, or uh, more specifically uh, their commitments to women's education and the education of girls in Afghanistan. And we feel if they live up to international commitments, it would be easier for us and others to fight the case for an increased support uh, for humanitarian efforts and a stabilization of the Afghan economy. Uh, you know, you are obviously a Muslim country. I think the world's first Islamic republic was Pakistan. Uh, you have a well, historically, a lot of influence on, on the Taliban. You just heard Fatima Gailani, former MP and women's rights activist, peace negotiator. She said that countries such as, as yours and other Muslim nations also need to uh, put their weight in with the Taliban. Do you have any notions of perhaps you, your government, trying to persuade them, coming here, talking to them, taking them around, showing them what a proper Muslim country, well, Muslim countries can do? to give some kind of rights to women? Um, so as far uh, as our efforts are concerned, I'd like to repeat that th it is very important to emphasize uh, uh, the, the humanitarian crisis developing in Afghanistan and all the steps that we can take to try and avert that. I appreciate uh, the uh, MP who sp spoke before me. She has been a very brave uh, contributor uh, to her own uh, country. And as far as uh, women's rights are concerned, as far as the right to women educations are concerned, she's absolutely right. We don't see this, I don't see this as an issue uh, of, uh, of the West. I see uh, the uh, women's rights or a women's rights to educations as rights granted to us from Islam. 
the Qurans, the first word in the Quran is Ikra, to read. It doesn't say only men read. We are all meant to pursue uh, our, our path to education. And indeed, uh, through, uh, in, in our uh, uh, private interactions uh, uh, and on a, on a public level, we will be emphasizing the importance to uh, uh, in, ensure uh, a right to access to education, not only because it is a commitment between the, 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 the Taliban government and the international community, but also these are rights guaranteed to women in Islam. Pakistan is the country in the Muslim world which saw the first female prime minister elected, Shaheed Mothrama Benazir Bhutto. She was elected the first time, the second time, and if she was not assassinated, she would have been elected a third time. These are achievements within uh, the Islamic world. So the Islamic uh, world will be working together to help relieve and alleviate the humanitarian crisis, to insist that the economic collapse of Afghanistan is a disaster, not only for Afghanistan, but for the region. But simultaneously, uh, we'll be emphasizing that the Taliban keep their international commitments and we ensure uh, rights to uh, the women of Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Foreign Minister, you mentioned your mother, the late Benazir Bhutto, who was tragically assassinated. You know, she actually, in the 90s, when she was Prime Minister, and I'm just going to make sure I get this right, because I remember it, publicly supported the Taliban. This was all part of this endless Pakistani-Indian uh, political standoff. And your former Prime Minister Imran Khan, after the fall of Kabul, as the Taliban call it, the liberation of Kabul, he actually said the same thing. He welcomed the Taliban takeover, saying the chains of slavery for Afghanistan had been broken. Thank you for you your You know question. the United States Should believes that your country... Yeah, has, has played a very dangerous role um, in supporting the Taliban over the decades. Uh, since you've raised it, I'd like the opportunity to engage with this question properly. I, I thank you for it. As far as my mother's words are concerned, I think that they're taken out of con context, and it's quite unfair to say that, given she was assassinated uh, by extremist forces in Pakistan while fighting the case against Islamic extremism and terrorism, both in our country and Afghanistan and across the world. As far as the recognition of the Taliban government in the 1990s, it is is indeed true that when my mother became Prime Minister, she did not reverse the decision of the government preceding hers to recognize that, uh, to recognize the Taliban government at the time. Pakistan has consistently had an engagement with Afghanistan, no matter who has been in power, and absolutely uh, we have had disagreements uh, about the way this conflict has uh, progressed and developed. We have always been advocates of the fact that alongside action against terrorist activity, ultimately the resolution of the dispute in Afghanistan was dialogue and diplomacy. And ultimately, despite pa Pakistan being on the receiving end of criticism for maintaining and sustaining this position, the international community ultimately went down that route in, uh, when they're resolving uh, the, 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 the conflict and the issues in uh, uh, Afghanistan. We now want to look to the future uh, and the present, the present situation and the future rather than going into the past. Pakistan is, it is neighbor, neighbor with Afghanistan. We can't change our neighbors. We have to understand that. And the developments of, in Afghanistan have a direct impact on the lives of the people of Pakistan. Uh, there's a lot of blame to go around about how this situation developed. If we focus on that, I think it hampers our ability to deal with the crisis at, at hand. We must prioritize leaving the humanitarian crisis, ensuring that there's not a total economic collapse in Afghanistan, and holding the uh, Taliban regime to the international commitments. And I particularly want to just mention here that it was not Pakistan or anybody else, but it was the United States who had direct communication and dialogue with the Taliban regime uh, before the, their takeover uh, of Kabul. And there's a direct agreement between the United States and this regime. So if we get into pedantics about who recognized who when, that complicates the issue. It suffice to say that we all believe 
Pakistan believes and the international community believes that will not serve any of our interests if we abandon the people of Afghanistan once again. Mm -hmm. Once again, indeed. Can I just ask you, because we did mention it, and it is historically so interesting and relevant, you know, you are Benazir Bhutto's son, you are Zulfikar Ali Bhutto's grandson, both of them were tragically killed by extremists and fundamentalists. Your grandfather was executed, your mother, as we've said, was assassinated. And, you know, we offer our condolences. I want to ask you, as a new politician and a new leader in this Pakistani government now, how does that inform how you will be, how you will think, how you will act about this terrible crisis of extremism, fundamentalism, that seems to be growing around the world. No, thank you, and actually you, 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 you noted so correctly, because it does hit close to home. My grandfather, Shahid Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, was assassinated uh, by the dictator uh, of the day who pushed an Islamization uh, policy within and without Pakistan. The Frankenstein monsters that were created as a result of that regime are the very forces that my mother battled against her entire uh, political life and, ult and ultimately uh, was assassinated at the hands uh, of similar uh, extremist uh, elements and terrorist groups. Uh, now, um, within the Pakistani context, uh, this definitely informs my outlook, not only domestically and internationally, and while dealing with the with the realities, the ground realities of the situations in and around us, combating extremism, combating terrorism, spreading the peaceful, progressive message of Islam, advocating uh, for human rights, for women's rights, for democracy, are incredibly important to myself and my party and form the basis of our manifesto. And, and we will continue uh, to do, that, uh, do so in whatever capacity we find ourselves in. At the moment, there's a unity government in Pakistan where all political parties have come together to push electoral and democratic uh, reforms. And despite our diverse opinions, outlooks, and manifestos in the, in the larger uh, national interest, we have come together to pull our, con our country out of a multitude uh, of crises, including a threat to our democracy, our economy, and obviously the threat of extremism and terrorism. Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. It's such a pleasure speaking to you.